Hey, good morning to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. It is Tuesday now, the 7th of October, 2025. Pretty busy morning here with a lot going on out in the tropics from the eastern Pacific. We have Octave and Priscilla out there. And in the Atlantic, by the time this video gets on and lots of people see it, we will probably have our next tropical depression well on its way to being Jerry in the Atlantic Basin, and then later down the road, which is going to be our biggest impact event, I do believe, a coastal storm does seem to be in the works for the coast of the Carolinas, maybe parts of the Mid-Atlantic. I don't think the Carolinas are part of the Mid-Atlantic, are they? They're, they are the southeast. Anyway, it's all coming together to be quite a busy week in regards to what's happening in the tropics from either indirect impacts or, in some cases, direct impacts, and I'll cover it all for you here today. So thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. First of all, uh, our tracking map, the interactive map off the Hurricane Track Insider site. There's 95L. Eventually, it's going to be our next depression, TD number 10, I believe, and then we're going to, it'll be quickly named thereafter, Jerry. It might even be later today. This is the area that I was looking at with you yesterday. Uh, still some activity down here. I'll show you on satellite in a moment. But no low-level vorticity, not much energy down near the surface, so not too worried about it. Yet another system is going to develop uh, along and south of the coast of Mexico and eventually move up towards the Gulf of California. We have Priscilla here, Category 2, Octave, which was going this way, and then it came back this way. All of it trying to bring a lot of moisture to our friends in the desert southwest. So, yeah, like I told you, a very busy time of it here as we move into the second day of the new week. So here's what it looks like on the satellite animation. Let's first start in the east pack. There's Octave, there's Priscilla, big old hurricane out there. And that's a lot of moisture that's going to get flung up into this region right here. I'll show you some stuff from National Weather Service Flagstaff in just a few minutes. This is a piece of the energy associated with some semblance of a Central American gyre down here. Definitely some disturbed weather tangled up with Central America, but as we look at the, eventually look at the vorticity signature, you know, you look at that and you think, something's trying to brew, there it is. Nope, not so much, because there's just not much down at the surface. Uh, and instead, it's all focused here in the Gulf of Tehuantepec in the southeastern Pacific, and I can show you coming up pretty soon. That, though, and we're going to take a different perspective of it in a moment, is Invest Area 95L, well on its way to becoming our next tropical depression. Come on, mouse. There it is right there. Better look at it. Really starting to come together now. This is going to crank out some ace points again once it becomes a tropical storm. More than likely move off in this direction right here and curve out into the Atlantic and just live several days like that roughly and uh, really pack those ace points in. Accumulated cyclone energy. It'll be a big wave generator. Not too worried about our friends down here in the Northeast Caribbean islands. It looks like most of the guidance, the reliable guidance. Then look, there's some models that do bring it right through. I'll show you that in a moment. But, I mean, most of the global models and the consensus uh, models showing that this will curve back away from the Caribbean. So let's take a look at the vorticity signature of all of our different players this morning. Notice the lack of any vorticity here in and around the Northwest Caribbean. A little piece of energy sitting here, uh, basically near Belize and the Gulf of Honduras, more over land in parts of southeastern Mexico, and then sort of an oblong-shaped piece of energy here in the Southeast Pacific. It is this one that the computer models like, and uh, that should develop eventually and move off in that direction. That's the Vortmax, definitely a Vort signature, uh, of Priscilla. There's Octave. You know, I really like these and I like showing this to you because I can demonstrate to you, especially since the University of Wisconsin, however this thing is made, doesn't have the, the tropical cyclone symbols on top of these features, especially in the East Pack. So you can really see very, very well-defined vorticity at the low levels. This is 850 millibars in the atmosphere, about 5,000 feet up. That structure like uh, I like to talk about a lot. Well, that's what it looks like. You know, this is very loosely defined. So is this. You know, we had some disturbed weather hanging out around the Bahamas recently. These are all areas where it's very loosely defined. It's not bundling. And remember, in the tropics, it's all about 
focusing that energy, releasing heat back into the atmosphere through condensation. Condensation is a warming process, and you get that heat, of course, from the very warm, I don't know, upper few hundred feet of our oceans, roughly, right? And when it comes together, as much as they cause mayhem and death and destruction, yes, we recognize that, but it is a beautiful thing meteorologically. It really is, and you can see it. You can see the math and the physics of it all come to life on a chart such as this. And again, it's such a bummer that they do cause the problems that they do, because they are marvels of meteorology. And that is the vorticity signature, speaking of all of that, um, of 95L out there in the deep tropics. And again, it's at a pretty low latitude. And again, normally you would expect there'd be a big area of high pressure sitting out here. And there kind of is. And it would just steer it on to the west. I talked about this yesterday, but that is not going to happen it's just there's too weak of a, uh, or I guess you could say, yeah, too weak of a high pressure area, too strong of sort of a crack in that ridge out here, and it's going to allow this thing to move on through, finding the path of least resistance. High pressure, thicker air in the atmosphere, low pressure, the air is rising, it's thinner, generally speaking, troughs and ridges, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? All right, so yesterday it was more globs, today definitely starting to look a lot more healthy and I really like to look at the high resolution visible as the Sun comes up there it is well on its way to becoming our next tropical depression if we go back to this and switch back over to that I do want to show you that the models generally showing this is the 12z so hot off the presses yay uh, the consensus HCCA that's a consensus TVCA X whatever yeah the consensus models have this turning north and east well away from the islands down here a few of the models are very insistent and persistent they keep showing it and they stick with it uh, going right through the northeast caribbean but i think they're going to be wrong i really do uh, because everything else is to the right these i uh, said this yesterday as well they're called outliers so do not worry about that i did want to show you though because they are there i'm not going to ignore it but there's not a lot of weight in those models believability right now all right intensity guidance yeah this probably becomes a hurricane generally speaking most of the intensity is up and everything this year seems to have overperformed once it gets going so it wouldn't surprise me if this becomes another category three i don't know if it's going to make four or five that's a stretch in october never say never right especially this year lots of warm water for it to work with our system out here showing you the western extent of the basin for now our soon-to-be depression is still sitting like way out here off the map but it's going to move through this area and turn something like that as i showed you somewhere in this alleyway through here still plenty of anomalously warm water for it to work with and uh so yeah it'll probably become a stronger hurricane at some point meanwhile gulf caribbean areas all still quite anomalously warm Southwest Atlantic kind of chopped up a little bit from all of our Umberto and Amelda shenanigans, however, and this will start to become relevant soon. The Gulf Stream is still running warmer than average, and then it's very much warmer than average up off the coast of New England and elsewhere. It doesn't matter for now, just thought I'd point it out. Uh, but this is going to come into play as we get what looks to be a coastal storm developing over the coming days. Now, Going through the different models here, the global models, we're going to start, first of all, looking at Priscilla and really the next week or so because there's going to be a lot of moisture potentially coming into Arizona. That's good to see, but again, with it happening towards the weekend, another thing I mentioned yesterday, I just want to keep this going. I want people to be aware. That is the number one goal of mine is awareness and education. And when I, I say this a lot, too, with everybody looking at this all the time, and now we can create AI fiction of whatever in the heck we want to starring ourselves we have less time spent looking at stuff that's important like the weather and if you're gonna go hiking or whatever the case may be out in the desert southwest you need to be aware of stuff like this so without further ado let's see what we got so this is what we have from the 6z GFS this morning nothing over the next couple of days but watch what happens moisture starts to stream in we'll use blue here to separate it all out gets pulled off of Priscilla into the desert southwest coming across the 
northern parts of the Baja region of northwestern Mexico, of course. So by Friday and Saturday, really Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you see these little streaks in here? That shows me those are areas of heavier precip that the model is starting to pick up upon. So if you're going to be hiking through some of these areas up through here, Vermilion Cliffs, elsewhere, Grand Canyon, slot canyons in here, yeah, you got to be really mindful of this. Seriously, we don't need any problems from something that is easily trackable, and we have plenty of warning that it's coming. And if we look at a, about a week out, even more moisture from the next system maybe comes up across southeastern Arizona and parts of New Mexico. So it's going to be wet in the desert southwest, which is good as long as you can avoid any problems with it. I think we can all agree with that. Uh, another infographic just to further emphasize all of this for you. Slight risk there for flooding. Again, if it was a slight risk of severe weather, there would be hundreds of storm chasers out here probably. But flooding, you know, we don't take that as seriously for whatever reason. I get it. That's why it's part of my job to point it out to you. Uh, look at some of these cities in here, little towns, whatever. Yeah, you got to pay attention to this. This is a hiking region for sure. I love this area of the country, and if it wasn't for what's coming with this coastal storm, I would already be planning on heading out there to cover it. But we do have the coastal storm coming, which I will show you as we progress through the GFS and the Euro here. Again, this is my favorite area of the atmosphere, 6Z run, 850 millibars, to really show you how the framework of everything comes together, the skeletons uh, of any system, the framing, whatever you want to call it. And again, that vorticity is such a neat thing to spot. There it is in and around the Bahamas in South Florida. Very loose, spread out. It's trying to concentrate down here a little bit more energy in and around Central America, but not really doing it. And then there's a weak little area of energy right there here, just a small hint of a tropical wave. And then, or as Bob Ross would say, just an indication of a tropical wave, right? And then way over here is off the screen our Vortmax of, uh, or the signature anyway, of 95L. So let's move all this out through time. And at 48 hours, there it is. And I can say he this time because this will be Jerry. Uh, but there you go. There's what would be Jerry coming into the frame. That's the vorticity signature of that. Fairly pronounced increase there in South Florida, which tells me rain. Yep, lots of rain coming again for parts of South Florida. Very difficult to pinpoint who gets what, when, and how much, all that kind of stuff, because it's just hard. I mean, it is. You know, even with today's meteorology, it's hard to know for sure. But you see that kind of energy down there. All this little yellow area tells me, you know, that's your vorticity, some energy in the atmosphere, deep tropical moisture, you're going to get heavy rain. That is energy bundled, and that is a tropical cyclone in the model. Yeah, pretty neat stuff, I think. Moving this on out further to 72 hours, there is our next system in the East Pack. And more energy just kind of spread out. Notice, too, we're going to get high pressure building up here to the north, squeezing it all together through here. We're going to get a baroclinically induced area of low pressure. So instead of heat and condensation and the release of heat that way, this is going to be more temperature differences and atmospheric changes. It's kind of hard to describe what baroclinic means, honestly, but the end result is going to be a coastal storm. And if we keep going, you see that start to t uh, take shape at day five. Now, this is Saturday into Sunday. Well-developed hurricane here. Noticed it does miss the islands pretty comfortably. Let's back that up. Let's see if I traced it. Ah, uh, not far off. But yes, it does miss the islands. In fact, I was too far south and west. It misses the islands with any direct impacts. You might see some showers and thunderstorms. Again, that yellow, I want you to just pay attention to little details like that. That does show me that there could be some feeder band action coming through. You know, the model may not have it exactly right, but the potential is there. So I wouldn't be surprised to see tropical storm watches, maybe for parts of the Northeast Caribbean, but that is about it. Anyway, back out to day five. There's our coastal storm starting to take shape. And we're going to look at this from a different perspective in just a moment because this is going to be important for our friends in especially North Carolina. There's Bermuda, by the way. I'll mark it for you, my friends out there. Uh, let's make sure that I got that right and that's not a wind barb in the way. That's what I thought. There's a wind barb right on top of it. That's Bermuda. And uh, what would be Jerry goes well south and east of Bermuda. 
But we got this pesky coastal storm, which could be a big problem. The Euro is very similar in its evolution overall. Weaker, though, that's for sure. I will say that with Jerry to be markedly weaker. And then it pumps up this coastal storm and kind of lingers around for a bit in and around the, the coast of North Carolina. So going back to the GFS, just let's, let's just compare the models real quick uh, for a moment in the southeast and switch the extent around here. There we go. Now let's back this up a little bit. So the coastal storm gets cranking uh, Thursday into Friday. And look at these stiff northeast winds. And this is what is so important here. All right, let me come back on my trademarked talking to you and not at you. So forget intensity. Forget... It's not a hurricane. Who cares? You're hyping this up. So understand meteorology and something called fetch. The distance over water in which the wind blows. Something like that. That is very, very important. The longer the wind blows over the water, especially as it's increasing the wind speeds, uh, and the longer and the greater that, that distance is that fetch, the bigger the waves get. And you get this long period swell developing and the tides come up and they are hard to reduce. We've got the king tides coming and going, full moon last night. And all of this is going to add up to causing some problems. And so these stiff northeast winds here, and these are your 10 meter winds, uh, 20, 30, and in some cases as it builds, 40, maybe 50 miles per hour. Watch what happens. You really start to crank those winds all the way down. This is important. I'm a North Carolina guy, live in Wilmington, but this is going to affect all of the southeast coast. Easterly winds to the south, right perpendicular almost into the low country of South Carolina. And then eventually everything switches out to the northeast. And those reds you see in there, 40s, 50 mile, 50 knots. These are all in knots. And uh, pressure down to 996. And very strong wind there pounding the northern outer banks, which is a vulnerable area. It's been in the news a lot. So this is what I will focus on. There is still time for this to not evolve as strong as you're seeing here. You say 996, that's not very strong. Don't worry about that. That's not, when I'm talking strong, I mean impacts. So this may evolve into not being as impactful. That's a better way to say it. But 996 for an October storm over warm water, uh, yeah, we could have some problems. And look up here, I mean, these winds here blowing in from the northeast straight into the tidewater in the Delmarva region Yes, this is going to be potentially a problem, especially the duration of it. We're talking two or three or more days, high tide after high tide. I fully expect coastal flood issues all along this area over the next several days, starting uh, really late week on. And the Euro is very similar in its evolution. In fact, it might even be a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, down to 989. Uh, we'll see. This might bundle up enough to be considered subtropical but then we start getting into that whole classification thing again and it doesn't matter honestly what we call it those stiff northeast winds blowing over hundreds of miles of open water that's going to pile up the ocean in some areas where they just do not need it not at all really so i'll be watching that more than likely heading up there late week maybe early friday morning hit the road and I'm going to take plenty of stuff with me because I plan on being stuck out there, stuck in quotes, uh, at the house that I'm able to use. Very grateful to the family that lets me use their home there in the Rodanthe area. We'll talk about this more because, again, there is time for this to maybe unwind a little bit, we can hope. And if that's the case and it looks like it might not be anything, I might shift my attention to Arizona. But I think this will come to fruition it's just a matter of the degree to which the impacts take place. And that'll be my job to talk about that with you over the next several days. All right. Covered a lot today. Thanks. Uh, uh, I thank you for sticking around. I thanks you. I thank you for sticking around and getting through it. I appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something from all of us at Hurricane Track. I am, of course, Mark Suddeth. I'll see you tomorrow.